everyone, it's Desiree, and I am honored to be here today for Spellbinders and part of a blog hop showcasing a shadow box, yes, a shadow box by Becca Feakin. So this is very unique and different. So this is definitely one of those 3D projects. So I'm going to show you a bunch of projects here now, two of them. I'm going to use in another video because this one is very long. If you don't like long videos, please let's not watch. This one is long. So that's the base right there. This are that's the die that you use to create the 3D frame. These beautiful butterflies, uh, flutter wing shadow box butterflies are absolutely gorgeous and can be used in so many different ways. Now, this product here, you're going to see in another video because I just had to make two. Um, I'm absolutely in love, but I have another piece coming in as well. And this is very unique. It's a ribbon threader. And again, I'm going to showcase that in another video as well. So again, my focus are going for this video is going to be the first two that I showed the butterflies and the actual die that's going to create this shadow box. This is very simple. Just stay with me step by step. Once you do this once, this is what you're going to create. And it is simple. Once you get the hang of it, there's always a learning curve. Now, also with this video, I'm going to keep it regular time as we build this. So I'm not speeding it up. The frame set that I'm going to be using is the three quarter inch frame. So that means it's going to be three quarters of an inch wide, this shadow box, the frame of it. And you can tell that they are clearly identified. Now you can get this frame die set in a one inch, a three quarter of an inch and a half inch. What you want to remember is for the one inch you're going to cut four inch strips for the three quarter inch you're going to cut three inch strips which is what we're using today and then for the half inch frame set you would cut two and one eighth inch wide strips now <clears throat> when it comes to that okay that's just telling you how wide it is you can determine okay the size of your frame now for this here we're going to cut or create a five by five inch shadow box now if you want a five by seven then you would have two of your legs which is what these are called um, this what i have in my hand right now those are the horizontal the ones that are at the top or the bottom so if you want your base to be five inches if you want it to be five inches wide then you would cut your strip three inches wide because we're using the three quarter frame and then you would cut two of those that i was pointing to first five inches long for this one here the one with the cutout let's call it that those are your side panels so again if my top and bottom are going to make it five inches wide let's say i want it to be seven inches tall <clears throat> excuse me, then I'm going to cut it, these strips seven inches by three inches. You want to cut your strips before you place your dies. Okay. So again, we're going to make a five by five shadow box. So my top and bottom are going to be cut three by five and my sides are going to be cut three by five. So you're going to cut your rectangles first. So to help with this, I kind of drew this diagram. So again, five by five, and that's the outer edge. So again, going across the very top edge or the outer edges, this is going to measure five by five. If you want to measure the inside, what the opening size will be, a five by five inch frame will give you a three and a half inch by three and a half inch opening. Now, how do I know that? Okay, so remember, we're using the three quarter inch frame. So if I take three and a quarters plus three and a quarters, that gives me an inch and a half. 
So if I take an inch and a half from five inches, that gives me three and a half inches. So that's how, what's going to determine your opening. So again, you want two of your side and two of your top and bottom. So you want to make sure, again, we're cutting two three inch by five inch, and we're going to cut two three inch by five inch to make the width. So they're all cut the same, but we're going to use the two different dies because we want two of each of those dies. I hope that makes sense. So if you wanted a five by seven, your top and bottom, again, would be five by three, and your two sides would be three by seven. Okay, and then for the seven, you take an inch and a half off of that, so you're gonna have a three and a half by five and a half inch area that's gonna be opened to decorate. Okay, so I'm kind of staying on this just so that you can see these. All right, what's determining your height? What number's determining your width? Just know that depending upon your frame set, you already have that set determination of what you're gonna cut. If it's an inch, four. If it's three and a quarters of an inch frame, you're gonna cut it three inches. And then of course the half inch, two and one eighth. So these are the pieces that we're going to cut. Now I, I wrote on the two so that you can tell which one's your horizontal, which one's your vertical. So now I have these cut. Again, you're gonna hear me say these measurements constantly and I apologize. Three by five, we're making a five by five. So I'm gonna show you how I placed the dies because we can always cut a little bit differently, you know, when we're using whatever trimmer we're using. It could be off a little bit, that's okay. So we're gonna do the top and bottom first. So get your washi tape, purple tape, masking tape, whatever tape you use, you definitely need it. So what I like to do is I like to take these dies and come in from the same side. So I'm gonna slide that die across and then I'm gonna push it so that it's even to the top the die itself. What's happening is as I'm sliding that die, the side of the die, that lip that cuts is catching on the side of my paper. You can see that I'm not positioning my fingers right, but it's gonna catch. And once I know it's stopped, I'm going to put my tape down to set that in place. So I did this from the left-hand side, sliding that die over so that it'll catch. I wanna make sure I do that again. So here I'm going to now work on my next panel. So again, I'm sliding in from one side so that it catches. I've got my tape already ready on my fingers and I'm going to set that down. I'm going to do the same thing below, okay? Just placing the die coming in those points that are coming off of these dies are actually um, score lines. They're not cutting into your paper. So again, I did that from the right to the left this time. So I'm doing that same thing. I'm going to carefully remove the die. And in some cases you'll see, you know, I, I was a little bit wider than what the die was and that's okay. It's not wrong at that point, all right? You need, you wanna have a scoreboard. Now you can see we already have these score lines in. You do not want to score over those lines with your scoring tool, your paper creaser, or whatever you're using. You will actually crack the paper. And they say that, and it's true. Ask me how I know. Yeah, mm -hmm. So because I was off in my cut, I'm gonna make sure the smooth edge is along the left-hand side. You can see I'm these lines are going to match up and they're going to be perfect in your scoreboard. Or you can use a ruler with a butter knife, not the sharp edge. Okay. And I'm just scoring between those two score lines that are already there. I'm going to do that to each of the pieces. Again, making sure that flat side, because of the way that I positioned my dies, are always to the left going against that lip so that it's perfectly flat. 
Again, only scoring between the score lines that are already there. It's the same thing with this piece. You're going to do the same thing. So again, I flip that. You can tell I've got that little bit of a lip. It's okay. It's not going to set your box off, but I'm just going to score in between those. And then I'm just going to bend the lines. Okay. I want to make sure they're bent. I'm going to put it into the tube shape, but I chose to not use my paper creaser to make these sharp and crisp lines. And, and there's a reason that you've got to have a, for me, I just wanted a little bit of wiggle, got to wiggle a little bit here. So I'm just making sure that they are forming into these tubes that we first are going to connect. Okay. So I've got two of each going on here. Now you want to have a strip. So after I cut my pieces, I had these spare scraps and I'm just going to trim one down. Just, just take a scant off of it because I want it to fit in that channel right there. And again, it's the channel between the two score lines. All right. So whichever channel you use, it's fine. They're the same size, but I just wanted to make sure that it fit within those. And I'm going to need four of these. They don't have to, they're not any specific size. You just want to make sure that they're at least, I'd like to make mine at least, you know, an inch. You must have at least an inch in that length. Okay. So everybody's with me so far, right? So we've got our two, our top and bottom, our two sides, and we have our tabs. So right about now is if you want to um, have color on your panels, now's the time to do it. Okay, before we start putting this together, put color if you want that on your frame, or you can use colored cardstock. I chose white just to show here's the time you want to do this. So I pulled out, of course, my Distress Oxides. I chose worn lipstick and I'm using my Distress brushes and I'm just putting my color down very lightly. I don't want a solid color. I want it to look scratchy. I want it to look worn. And then, of course, now we all knew the Vintage Photo was coming in, right? Right. Here it is. So now I'm using my Vintage Photo ink and I'm going the opposite way. Again, just to go against that grain that's been formed from our score lines. So it's actually, it's going to go across the pink, but at the same time, it's really hitting those score lines because I want those up. And this, this is what our frame is actually going to look like. Now on the top and bottom, you can see you've got a difference in the edge. You've got a shorter angle at the at one side and you've got a longer angle on another. Place your longer angle towards you, towards the bottom, and you can see the colors away from me. So they're curving towards me. And when I line these up, you can see I've got that perfect triangle. That's what you want to make sure that you have. And then at the top, that sharp angle was matching with the one to the left. This is where those little pieces came in. Now I quick covered them with some vintage photo. You don't have to. I just wanted to. It was just something to do. Double-sided tape, I feel, for one of these projects is your friend. Glue would be fine, but it will slow you down. And there's a, a movement that you're going to have when you put this together. All right. So double-sided tape allows for that movement. <clears throat> so will liquid adhesive, um, but you don't want a tape runner. You either want to go with a double-sided tape, it's strong, it's quick, or a liquid adhesive. So I'm going to take one of my tabs. I've put my double-sided tape on them. Now this is what's going to connect our panel. So you want to do every other one. Make sure you do every, remember, top and bottom, <laughs> you got to go every other one. So I'm going to keep lining these up and I'm going to create this string of four. 
and I'm just going to remove my release paper. And if you do color the tabs, the side that you used color on, that goes down. So everything that you're looking at is curving towards you and is white. It's the inside of this shadow box you're creating. So again, I'm going to take that last piece. I'm going to make sure I have my triangle that's correct at the bottom. It should match. The, the level and the angles should match. I'm going to remove my release paper and then I'm going to just, I just really want to push those together. I want to make sure they are right next to each other as best as I can. Now I've got one more tab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere that to the end. So it's going to hang off and that's okay. Cause what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my release paper off but then I'm going to put it back on, but on one half of this tab. And then I'm going to bend it right where the exposed tape is and where the release paper is covering. Just as I'm doing here. So the part of the tape that's exposed, that's what's going to go on this piece here on the end. So now we're going to have a continuation once we connect them okay is i hope everyone's with me so far but it, it's simple right just got to know what size box you're making so that you know how to cut your pieces so once you have that going again white is the underside that's coming in and now we're going to start bending so now i'm just going to bend those tabs just get them moving I'm going to bend these little tabs in because they're going to come in as well. So just getting everything ready. <clears throat> but what I also want to do, I'm going to flip this over because before I start bending this together, I want to make sure my double sided tape is in place. So you want to place your tape on those little tabs on the two um, vertical legs, your two sides. So it's the ones with the cutouts. You also want to make sure that you're putting, you want to put your double sided tape on at this point along that top edge. So again, I flip this over and I'm going to put my double sided tape along where the longer angles are, where the triangles are, where they meet, not where the opening is, just where my triangle openings are. And I'm going to put my double sided tape there. That's going to come into play once this is all together. So you want to do that now. Ask me how I know. Yes, I did test this, obviously, because you saw that in the beginning of what we're creating. I did play around with this just to, to find little tiny tips and tricks for myself. So here we go. We're going to bend. So you're going to take your hands, you're going to start forming the tubes and they're going to push into each other. So the top and the bottom push into the sides and see how it's creating the mitered corner. You're bending the tubes, you're pushing them together. <clears throat> now I'm going to keep showing this to you, so don't think I'm going to stop, but you can see that tab where we put the tape goes right along that edge. So you're able to get your finger in there to push it up against that edge. That's what's securing this. Now, of course I didn't do it all the way, so I'm just going to trim that edge so it doesn't stop that top fold to come over. Okay. That's our first one. So here we go. Second one. So take your hands, grab each of them in your hand. And you can see I'm still playing with this because you want to make sure you have a good adhesion. Again, I want to remove my release paper first. I'm going to bend that in because that's where that needs to go. I'm forming the tubes on each one. The tubes are formed. I'm going to take the one in my right hand and I'm going to push it up into that mitered edge. I'm going to take my fingers and push along that other edge 
so that the tab that you can't see right now, there we go, so that that tab, I'm going to pinch it along the straight edge so that it's adhering there. Again, you grab your tubes, make the tube formation, and you're just going to bend down and they're going to fall right into place. All right. I'm going to show this again. This one, I'm, I'm going to focus in on this for everybody so that you can see once you get the hang of it, just by doing, forming the tubes with your two hands and just bending it, it actually just automatic. It's amazing. It automatically forms together. Forming the tube. And wherever the flat edge is, that's the one you're going to curve into the mitered corner. So now it's reversed. So now I'm really taking my left tube and pushing that up in there. So now I'm forming it. So you're always going into the miter, if that makes sense. I'm going to real quick push down because the back is still open. Even though we're forming those tubes, and I'm making sure that this one's going in, I'm going to keep that release paper on there. Now I just snap it in there. I have the release paper on this one. So you can see just by me doing that, just pushing them, it goes into that miter. I'm going to make sure that now these are removed and they're just going to form in. You just want to make sure that they're bending, but that paper is just going to skim along and make the connection for you. Now I'm going to real quick put, there we go. I'm going to tap in, push in that tab and I'm going to push it right into the miter. It's when I can flip it down and I can open up the back. I can get my fingers in there. Remember paper bends. You can bend this paper. You're okay. It won't tear. Now I do recommend a heavier cardstock, not, <clears throat> you know, a lighter paper, um, that will tear very easily. Um, but a nice solid weight cardstock. Now the cardstock that I'm using here is the recollections 110 pound. This will be fine with Stampin' Up cardstock. Of course, the, my favorite things, the Simon says, and again, they're, in the range of 80 pound or higher. That is what I recommend. So you can see just by pushing down, I have the back side up and just pushing that down, it's forming that. Now I did some trimming. So some of those points, I'm going to trim those points off just to make them a little bit flatter because we're going to get ready for our next step. And you can see, when after I make those trims, those tabs where we have the uh, double sided tape, that's going to be on the outside. I want those to flip over that. You could do it the opposite way. I mean, you could fold those in first. I don't think it would work too well. Um, I found this to be the most natural when it came to this, um, to put this together. What I am going to do at this point is I'm going to bend these tabs that are going to come over out because what I want to do is I'm going to put some double sided tape on this side of them. Now you have to remember this is hollow. Okay. So you don't have a solid piece that you're able to push on when you do this. But what you do have is at each of the corners, you've got a solid, um, almost a solid section because this is where everything's crossing, um, to form these corners and so forth. So when I release the tape and I fold over, there's going to be at some point when it comes to the two sides, the vertical pieces, you're always going to have an extra support pushing down on that. When you do the top and the bottom, 
uh, portions, it, it's hollow. There's there's really there's not that same um, support to push against to make sure your tape is adhering. So you just you've just got to play with that, pinch it, um, and so forth. Now at this point, you could do the two sides first, and you could use like I have a, a paintbrush end there to push up on the bottom so that it can make the double-sided tape it he you know uh, adhere these two pieces of paper I found I very rarely used it I tried it once I found it very cumbersome just by going around and pushing this this is sticking together just fine now you might be asking okay well then why do we have the release the double-sided tape on the outside you will see now you can see it doesn't look like it's holding together again just hug it pinch in those corners again that's the back side <clears throat> now what I found too again this there's a learning curve with this that's okay but as you keep pushing in on those corners it's snapping further together if you want to make sure I just added a little bit of glue right at those mitered corners because there is stability there and I held those two corners together and I pushed down I waited until I knew my glue was dry and once I knew that it was adhered it had a has a fast grip so you want to use an art glitter glue or the Nuvo deluxe you don't want to use an Elmer's it would take too long for it to stick you want a quick sticking um, adhesive here and I do that to each of my corners and that just snaps it together and that's okay you don't see the glue the glues up underneath you're able to do that and then you've got this beautiful frame backside is okay because what you're also going to cut knowing that you're making a five by five frame you want to cut a five by five piece of cardstock so because I know that this is going to be my background for this I pulled out a cloud stencil and of course my tumbled glass and I'm using my Ranger my distress blenders again and I'm going to create a sky back there just constantly going down using my stencil and just creating this cloud effect for the background and it's very soft it's nothing too bold I didn't want anything to be very bold on this project because I wanted my focal points to stand out so now that I have that I'm going to remove my release paper and this is how we adhere the frame to the backing to create the shadow box now it's okay that um, you know the 5x5 five five may not be the exact size or the 5x7 whatever size that you're making possibilities are endless here um, with what you want to do that's okay we can trim that and that's exactly what I did so what I chose to do to make sure I made sure I put my frame down onto the corner the bottom left hand corner I know I have this edge sticking out that's okay we're gonna trim that away I am using the pressure of my hands once I know it's secured I'm going to trim those edges away using my long shears and I can do that just by angling the scissors right up to the edge and no one will be the wiser again doesn't have to be perfect no one's gonna see the back unless they turn it around and if they do tell them to stop see okay that is our shadow box it's a wonderfully easy project lots of steps I know it was long but I wanted to make sure that you saw those steps now I want to make an easel now there is a die specific to make an easel it's absolutely gorgeous but what I chose was I cut a piece of cardstock two inches by five inches I'm going to use the same coloring that I did on my frame between my warm lipstick and my vintage photo 
I'm going to score it at two and a half, at four and a half, and at half an inch. So a half an inch, two and a half, and four and a half. I'm going to bend them, and now I've created the easel. So on the two side notches, I used double-sided tape. And you want to set this up. So the lower you set it, the more straight up your easel will sit. The higher up you put it to on the back, the further back it will sit. So you can see I've got this pretty well sitting straight up there. Now I am going to remove this so that we can decorate. We must decorate our shadow box. But that's how you could make it stand. Make your own easel. It's simple, I promise. So to save time, because we're already, you know, at 30 minutes, I did some panels. I used some of my sprays and gold sprays and all of that, and I just had to use the butterflies. Now, what I love with the dies for the butterflies, the outer die that surrounds it is two pieces, which I think is awesome. I mean, think of the possibilities. You can make wings. It's, it's just wonderful. So I'm going to tape these down and I'm going to die cut them because I do want the two separate. Even though they're going to be my base, I did want them to be separate. You can take these dies, push them together, and when you die cut it, it will cut out the solid image. So these dies are very versatile. And then you have these beautiful designs for the inside. So now that I have those cut, and I also have the center of the butterfly cut, you can see those in the upper right-hand corner, I'm now going to cut out some of my butterflies. I'm going to position them specifically on this paper so that I can get a specific look. Once I have all the die set, even the outer one, because that's going to cut out the image, I'll be able then to have this overlay. I wanted my sprays to be the overlay. I used my Spellbinders tool in one to just pop out those sections. And now I'm just putting glue down the center and adhering my back pieces. And I did choose brown. Now I'm only choosing to put glue down the center because I want the panels, um, the colored panels, to, to come up. I want them to be bending up so it makes it look like they're, they can flutter a little bit. But I'm just going to continue to put my backing, which will line up beautifully, with the design. So I'm going to use some glue down the front so that I can then place the butterfly bodies right on top as well. And here I'm just going to curve this paper. The paper that I chose my panels for is a Bristol paper so that I could add lots and lots of spray and just let them dry. I just love the way that they came out. Um, the colors are just absolutely beautiful. And yes, you can tell at this time I'm speeding up the video just a little bit. I dug into my stash and I pulled out one of my old Spellbinder uh, monthly die kits. I believe this is from July. And I just was looking for some sprigs, you know, some, some greens. Not that I'm using green cardstock, but just some greens so that I can add these accents. And I thought these were perfect because of the way that they looked, the, almost like tails so to speak. I used a little bit of vintage photo on them just to give them some shadow, but not too much. And now I'm just going to place my pieces um, just in different areas. I just want to see what it looks like. I want that big butterfly to, to sprawl across the bottom left-hand corner. I want one of them to sit in the box just to give it depth. And then I want my last one to look like it's coming off of the shadow box and then my sprigs are just adding some accents again i want the butterflies to be the main um the main eye-catching focal point but yet this box and all of the other accents are just adding some interest to it so once i know this is the layout that i'm looking for i'm going to go to town and just use my liquid adhesive and adhere all of my pieces to it. By this time, the box is very solid. It is together. The adhesives have taken a hold, 
and it's not going to come undone. After my sprigs are set, I'm going to set my butterflies in place. I'm going to start with the one that goes on the inside. And now I'm going to work with the sprigs towards the bottom because I know that big butterfly is going to cover it. Um, once I know that piece is set in place, I'm going to make sure push down onto the box to make sure the butterfly is securely set. And then I'm going to continue now up into the next corner. This is fine to use liquid adhesive and I would suggest it because you can just go to town and just keep adding and adding and adding, um, which I think is wonderful. I'm going to set this last butterfly coming up off of the right hand top corner and make sure the wings are up as well. And then we're just going to add um, a few gems. I want to make sure that we have some sparkle here. So I'm grabbing my ivory gems and I'm just going to place them throughout down onto the background onto the leaves that I have here just to accent those, the corners that are actually opened as well, just to hide the ends of the leaves that I put in. And then once I have all of those jewels set, I'm then looking at the butterflies to see how I can accent them as well, just to give them a bit of shine and glimmer. And I am just a huge fan huge huge fan um, of these gems these gems i believe are by uh, pretty pink posh um, i'm collecting them yes um, they're just absolutely gorgeous so i'm going to set the last of my gems on my final butterfly and that is our project it now, now i'm going to put my easel back in place so I'm going to set it up just a little bit higher than what I had it before. I'm going to push down to make sure that it's secured. And now it sits back just a little bit more um, and it'll look great on anybody's desk or shelf as I tip it back um, just to make someone smile. So I do hope you enjoyed this project. Um, it looks intimidating, um, but you know what? Once you get the hang of it, it really does go very quickly. And I really do think that you will enjoy it and create some wonderful, wonderful projects. As always, the projects, uh, the products that I used will be linked down below. So please click on them just to check it out if you want to know some more um, information. And of course, there are other dyes that are available as well. So there is more to this whole product line. As always, it is absolutely gorgeous. All right, so thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. There's so much more coming. Here are a few other videos I thought you would be interested in, as always. But always remember, take care, enjoy your day, and always be creative.